Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 163. Day, day 3163. 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 163. We are in the process of solving the math problem from the two practice tests that you will find at, at the very end of the book. We are working on the second test. We already finished the first one. Practice test number two on page number 491. That's where we're going to pick up from. Problem number 9, turn to page number 499, 491 rather, make sure the book is in front of you, and let's get going. Before we actually do problem number 9, before we actually do problem number 9, there are a couple of, th couple of things we have to make sure that we understand and we remember, we refresh our memory, the two kinds of triangles that we encounter on the GRE over and over and over again. Let's talk about those two triangles. Let's first talk about, uh, let's, let's first deal with something that will be a little bit more complicated, then we'll talk about a simpler one. The triangle that we're talking about is a right angle triangle, obviously, and it is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This is 30 degrees, and if this is 90, and if this is 30, this will have to be 60. A 30, 60, 30, 60, 90 triangle, a 30, 60, 90 triangle is where the sides, the three sides, are in a fixed proportion, always. They are always in a fixed proportion. And what those proportions are, is something that we have to know by heart. It's something you must know. Do you understand? And the simple trick that I use, the mnemonic device that I use, the mnemonic device that I use for myself that always works for me is that I say to myself that we have three kinds of tri three kinds of angles here. We have a 30 degree, we have a 60 degree, and we have a 90 degree. There are three kinds of angles. So let's put down one, two, three. With me so far? Then take the very last number and put a square root sign on it. And then remember that in the triangle, opposite sides and angles are proportional. In other words, opposite sides and angles are proportional. In other words, the, the side that faces the biggest angle in the 30, 60, 90 triangle, 90 degrees is the biggest angle. The side that faces the biggest angle is going to be the longest side. The, the biggest number among these three, 1, 2, and root 3, which is about 1.7, root 3 obviously is less than 2. And root 3 is obviously more than 1. So if you were to put them in order, if you were to put them in order, 1, and then root 3, which is between 2 and 3, or rather between 1 and 2, root 3, of course, definitely, root 3, of course, definitely is more than 1, and I meant to put it the other way around. Root 3 is definitely more than 1, but it is less than 2. I'm explaining too much now. So we put them in order. This is the biggest angle. The side facing the biggest angle is the longest side. The side that faces the smallest angle, the smallest angle is 30 degrees. The side that faces the smallest angle, which is this side right here, is going to be the smallest side, 1. Even though it doesn't look like it here, but you must remember, you must always remember that the pictures in the GRE are not drawn to scale. The only time the picture, a given picture in the GRE is drawn to scale is when they actually tell you in the caption uh, uh, there is a notation underneath which tells you the picture is drawn to scale. If they not give you the notation that the picture is drawn to scale, then the default is that the pictures are not drawn to scale. So don't complain about the fact that it, it, this side, even though it's one, it actually looks bit longer than that side, even though this face is 60 degrees. If this face is 60 degrees, this is the middle side, which is root 3. They are always in this order. They are always in this, in this proportion. Do you understand? 1, root 3, and 2. 1 faces 30 degrees, root 3 faces 60 degrees, and 2, which is the biggest number, faces 90 degrees. Now the triangle that we have to understand is an isosceles triangle, where this angle is 45 degrees, this angle is 45 degrees, and again we are dealing with a right angle triangle, an isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangle. And here, how many different kind of angles do we see? Well, I only see two, I only see two kinds of angles, a 45 and a 90. There are only two variety, 45 and 90, only two. So one and two, just like here. We put down one, two, three because there were three kinds of different triangles. 
and then take the last number and put a square root sign on it. There you go, that's the proportion. So if this is 1, this side is 1, this side is also 1 because these are both 45, and the longest side is root 2. Which makes perfect sense, which makes perfect sense because if you apply the Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean theorem tells us that that side, which is root 2, or, or better yet, let's not pretend, let's pretend that we don't know what the third side is. If this side is x, and if this side is 1, and this side is 1, we get 1 squared plus 1 squared equals x squared, which means x squared equals 2, and hence x equals root 2. You see, it's root 2. So they are in this, they are in proportion, they are in this proportion, 1, root 3, 2, and here 1, 1, root 2. All set? Because without it, we cannot do number 9. And when we finish number 9, I'll give you the percentile as always, and you will see why the percentile in that problem was so low, is because people do not remember this thing. Let's do number 9. Once we know, once we understand these concepts, these two concepts, the problem is very simple. Problem number 9 is very straightforward, if you understand the concepts. So here is what is given to us. We've given a picture, and it looks something like this. Follow. This we are told is 60 degrees. This is the right angle. In the, in the book they give you the right angle symbol here. But if this is 90, then this is also 90, obviously. We don't have to show both, one or the other. If this is 90, this is 90, obviously. And they tell us that this is 45. And this is 40, if this is 90, then this side must be 90 because they have to add up to 180. So this is 90 even though we don't have to put the symbol both places. So this is 90 and this is 45, which means this is also 45. Even though they do not tell us that. This is what, let me first put down the picture as it appears in the, in the, in the book. This is what it appears. That's, that's all they tell us. And this is what the question is. Column A. It says, length of, a, length of AC from A to C. We have A, B, C. And let's give this, this point a name. Even though they do not, we're going to give this a point. Let's keep going, shall we? So we have length of AC versus column B, which is simply 3. Which is simply 3. Let's see what we can do. So this angle is 60. If this angle is 60, this angle has to be 30. So what are we dealing with? We're dealing with 30, 60, 90 triangle. They must have given something else to us. I'm leaving out. Yes, they did give us. They tell us that this is 2, you see? We just saw it that the longest side is longest side is two. They are in the ratio of they are in the ratio of one to root three to two. One will go to the side that faces the smallest angle. The smallest angle is thirty degrees. The side that faces the thirty degrees, the far side that faces the thirty degrees, this side. This side is one, which is D to C. That's one. And this side is going to be root three because it faces the 60 degrees. I'm going to erase this arrow because otherwise it gets to be too annoying. Now we work on the second triangle, which is, if this is 45 and this is 90, how do we know this is 90? This is, has to be 90 because that side, that angle is 90, and a straight line. If this is 90, this is 90. If this is 90 and this is 45, this would have to be 45. So in the triangle ABD, we are dealing with an isosceles triangle, and in the isosceles triangle, these two sides are to equal this side, side BD, side BD must equal, side BD must equal side AD. That's what makes it isosceles. So this side BD is equal to AD, which means from A to D is root 3. That's it, we're done. We wanted to find the length of AC, A to C, A to C is simply AD, you see, AD plus DC. AD we just found out is root 3 and DC we know is 1. So we are comparing root 3 plus 1 versus 3 versus 3. And root 3 we know is less than 2. It cannot be 2 or something more than 2. Root 3 whatever it is less than 2. As a matter of fact, if you want to know is approximately 1.7. But we don't have to know that. We don't have to know that root 3 is approximately 1.7. All we have to understand is that root 3 whatever it is, is something less than 2 root of 3, whatever it is, is something less than 2. So this is how we write something less than 2, 2 with a minus sign over it. Something less than 2 plus 1, something less than 2 plus 1 
would have to be less than 3. That's it. 3 is bigger than something less than 2 plus 1. The answer is B. Answer is B. And here is the person percentile for number 9. Only 36% of people got it right. Only 36% of people got it right. Let's do number 10. Number 10 is again a geometry problem. We're given a picture. Let's erase all of this thing. We don't need it. Yesterday I was pointing out the fact that the reason why the percentile was so low on question number 4 is because a lot of people have trouble with set theory and Venn diagram. Simple concept, basic concept, elementary concept of Venn diagram and set theory. If you are one of those people who is still struggling with uh, Venn diagram and set theory, watch these five videos if you have not watched them already. And I see no reason why you wouldn't have watched them already. I hope that you are watching this series in the proper sequence. Don't go all over the place. If you haven't watched them, watch day number 3091 to 3095. These five videos is where we talked about Venn diagram and the set theory. What are we going to do? Number 10. We need a picture. So this picture looks like this. And we are told that it crosses at negative 5 y axis and it crosses x axis at positive 5. And this is, of course, the origin. That's it. And they're simply looking for the slope of this line. That's all. This is your y-axis. This is your x-axis. They're looking for the slope. How much is the slope of this line? What is the slope of this line? Line K, they're calling it. The line K, it doesn't matter whether you call it line K or line L or line whatever you want to call it. Question simply is what's the slope? But we, clearly can, we can clearly see that it goes through these two, these two points. It goes through this point and it goes through this point. And this is the y-intercept. Instead of writing down the y-intercept, why, why don't we write down both coordinates, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of this point. Let's call this point A. And A point A has a 0, zero x-coordinate because it, it's on y-axis. And we are told that the y-coordinate is negative 5. Similarly, let's call this point B. Point B. And point B has 5. x-coordinate x, x is 5 and the y-coordinate is 0. So far, so good. Let's begin then. Let's begin there. So slope we know, slope as we know is simply rise over run, which is simply the change in y over the change in x. So we're going to go, we're going to go from A to B. We have two choices. We can either make our journey from A to B or from B to A. But we cannot switch in the middle of the uh, middle of the story. So if we go from A to B, going from negative 5, negative 5 to 0. What's the change in y? From going from negative 5 to 0, the change in y is we started at negative 5 minus 0. That's the change in y from negative 5 to 0. Similarly, since we started from A to B, we cannot now go from B to A. We have to continue from A to B. So what's the change in x? The denominator is change in x. Well, we started at 0 and we ended up at 5. So it's 0 minus 5. That's the change. Do you understand? As long as you're consistent. One more time. One more time. Negative 5 minus a 0. That's the negative 5 minus a 0. That's the change in y. And 0 minus 5 is the change in x. Or we could have done the other way around. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have mattered. So let's, let's continue then. Negative 5 minus a 0 is just negative 5. And here 0 minus negative 5 is also negative 5. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is positive 1. That's the answer. That's all. That's the slope is positive 1. It was a straightforward question. No problem there. And 69% of the people indeed had no problem there. They got it right. Almost 70%. And we would have gotten the same slope. We would have gotten the same slope had we done our journey from B to A. Let's do it on the top B to A. Or we can... Or we can do it again, going from B to A, and you'll see the... Just do it on the top, B, going from B to A. If we start our journey at B, and go to A, this way, then the change in X, Y is change in Y, or rather slope is equal to 
and the traditionally the traditionally conventionally the symbol that one uses to 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 denote slope is letter m that's just a tradition do you understand it's just a tradition nothing else it doesn't mean anything it, in other words it doesn't have any significance it's just a tradition tradition dictates that we use symbol m to denote slope change in y over the change in x and this time we're going to go from b to a so let's begin our journey so it's going to be zero minus this is where you have to pay attention zero zero minus minus five you see this is where you have to pay attention so that's going from zero to negative five and five minus zero five minus zero watch what happens zero minus the negative five negative and negative will become positive and 5 minus 0 is positive and positive 5 over positive 5 is positive 1 you see this was this was going from a to b going from a to b we got negative 5 over negative 5 which gave us which yielded a slope of 1 and this is from b to a in this case we're going from b to a but it doesn't matter which direction you move you have to be consistent if you started your journey from a to b you must carry on throughout the entire thing in that same direction. Enough said. Number 11. Number 11. I need a short break, if you would. What does number 11 say? Number 11 is on the next page. Page number 492. Page number 492. We are given five quantities. We are given five quantities. B minus B minus 3. B minus 1. B plus 2. Pay attention as to what is given to us. You understand? B plus 3 and B plus 4. These are the five quantities we are given. We are told that the median of this five quantity, median of this five quantity is 5. And the question simply is, what is their average? What is their average? What is the average of these five? And of course we are told that B here is constant. B is constant. We do not know we do not know what the value of B is at this point, but whatever it is, it has to remain constant. Of course it's constant because we are using the same symbol. In, in the language of algebra, if you use the same symbol, that means it's, it's the same value. Okay. In other words, for example, for example, if B happens to be seven, if B happens to be seven. 7 minus 3 is 4, 7 minus 1 is 6, 7 plus 2 is 9, 7 plus 3 is 10, and 7 plus 4 is 11. That's only in the event, that's only in the event that the B is 7. But whatever B is, is constant throughout the entire five entries. That's what they mean. But at this point, at this point in the story, we do not know what B is. We'll find out in a second. We have no idea what the value of B is, and until we find until we decipher, until we figure out what the value of B is, we cannot work on the average, obviously. We have to find the average. And in order to find the average, we have to know what B is. So let's see what we can do. As you can clearly see, they are already arranged in order. We just saw them. We were, they were already, they are already arranged in order. One more time, if B happens to be 7, if B happens to be 7, then 7 minus 3 is 4, 7 minus 1 is 6, 7 plus 2 is 9, 7 plus 3 is 10, 7 plus 4 is 11. As you can see, they are already written in order, they are all already in ascending order. In order to find the median, in order to find the median, the, the entries have to be either in the ascending order or descending order because we're looking for the one located sitting in the middle. The one that is sitting in the middle, 4, 6, 9, 10, 11, is this guy. In other words, in other words, our median, our median is this guy. This is our median. And that guy we are told equals 5. You see, we do not know what the B is, but we're going to find out in a second. As you can clearly see, what we can very clearly see what B, B must be. B would have to be three because median is five, and it equals B, B plus two. 
So 3 plus 2 equals 5. So we just found out that b plus 2, which is our median, is 5, b must be 3. Are you with me so far? So we found the b. b is equal to 3. If b is equal to 3, 3 minus 3 would be 0. That's the first entry. 3 minus 1 is 2. And I'm going to erase this thing now. 3 plus 2 is 5, of course, which is why they are equal. We were told the median is 5. You see, median is 5. And if b is equal to 3, 3 plus 3 is 6. And 3 plus 4 is 7. That's all it is. It's a very simple problem now. We simply have to find out the average of these five numbers. So let's do that, shall we? Let's find the average of these four numbers. Nothing to it. Okay, let's do it together. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 plus 7 is 14. 14 plus 6 is 20. It's just 20. The sum sum is equal to 20. One more time. One more time. How do we get 20? 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 plus 7 is 14. And 14 plus 6 is 20. And in order to find the average, we have to find how many, how many there are. There are 5 entries. So it's 20 divided by 5. The average is 4. That's all. The average of these 5 quantities is 4. Very simple, very straightforward problem. One more time. Oh, I can't believe it. It's, a, it's the exact same exact same percentile as the one before. Yes, it is. 69% of people had no trouble with it. Number 11 was 69 percentile. Tomorrow we'll meet again, obviously, and we'll work on number 12, 13, and 14. 12, 13, and 14, the remaining three problem, problems, rather, on this page. Okay? Bye now.